Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another video and the free agency frenzy looks like it's coming to a close as one of the biggest fish left in free agency has finally signed a contract as Nazim the Dream Kadri signs with the Calgary Flames on a seven year contract. Um, Calgary, what an off season. What an off season. It all started with losing Matt to Chuck and Johnny Gaudreau. Everyone thought they were going in full rebuild mode, but they made a couple trades and a couple acquisitions where honestly their team is pretty damn good still. And they are still contenders, at least in my mind. Uh, I'm on a random roster upload on the PS5 version where Nazim the Dream Kadri is 90 overall. I did not set any of these overalls. I'm just using... Uh, a roster with all the overall changes and all the up-to-date transactions from free agency. So yeah, Nazim Kadri, uh, Jonathan Huberdeau, another addition, defensively adding Mackenzie Weger. But if you've been living under a rock, uh, the F Florida Panthers and the Calgary Flames made a massive trade where the Calgary Flames acquired Jonathan Huberdeau, Mackenzie Weger, Cole Schwintz, and a Florida lottery pick first round lottery protected first round pick in the 2025 draft for Matt to Chuck and a fourth round selection, which was an absolute monster trade to Chuck wanted out. We lost, or I should say the Calgary flames lost Johnny Gaudreau to free agency who ended up going to the Columbus blue jackets as he just wants to play closer to home and, and you can't fault him for that. But losing him for nothing was quite the, quite the loss after he had a career year, but Coming back the other way, I mean, you got Jonathan Huberto, the second high, the sec, I, I believe he had the second most points in the NHL last year behind Connor McDaddy. So definitely not a slow trail player, but he is going from playing with Alexander Barkov to, to playing with Lindholm and to Foley, then Kadri, Majapani. Obviously, a little bit of a downgrade there, but I mean, Lindholm is still an absolute beast and one of the best two way forwards in the NHL, uh, given just his plus minus last year. But looking at the team now, kind of done with all of the transactions there. We got the first line we're going to do, we're going to do a three-year simulation basically and see if Kadri and Huberto can lead the Calgary Flames to a Stanley Cup. So it'll be three years. I'm not going to make any crazy trades, uh, nothing along those lines. I'm going to just let it simulate. Injuries are off, so they're going to be playing no matter what. Let me see if I can update that. No. So we'll keep it like that. So first line, we're going to go with Jonathan Huberto, Elias Lindholm, so 92, 88, and then Tyler Toffoli playing on the right side. He is a superstar X-Factor, so I believe it would help a little bit there. Second line, we're going to go with Andrew Majapani, who is at 85 overall, really had a great breakout year last year. Nazim Kadri, uh, 90 overall in the middle. I could put him on the first line, but it kind of affects the morale. But you know what? For the sake of the video, let's go Kadri and Huberto on that first line. They're two new additions, um, even if it hurts somewhere else just a little bit. And then finally, Lindholm will be playing with Dylan Dubé now. The third line, we got Blake Coleman, Mikhail Backlund, and Milan Lucic. Uh, I mean, no-neck Lucic, uh, always a menace to play against. Fourth line, a really good grinder in Trevor Lewis, Kevin Rooney, and then Adam Ruzicka? Ruzicka? I'm going to predict that's how you say it, but six foot four, 22. I don't know too much about this guy, but looks like he's going to be a pretty effective power forward if he can put on a little bit of weight. Defensively, this was another one of their massive additions here. They got McKenzie Weger, so if they can get him on a contract, it'll be a definite boost to their defensive core. Uh, he's under contract for one more year, I believe, uh, at 3.25 uh, mil. Um, he'll be playing with Rasmus Anderson. I, I was honestly hoping the Ottawa Senators, I'm a big Sens fan, I was hoping they would also get Mackenzie Weger, but it uh, didn't end up happening, but he is on the Calgary Flames, and his defensive partner will be Rasmus Anderson. Second line, we got Noah Hannafin, 85 overall, and Christopher Tanev, also known as Chris Tanev, coming from Vancouver last year. And then third line, honestly, one of the guys I really like a lot, I think it's Krillington is how you pronounce it. But I watched him play a launcher in the postseason. And on, honestly, I was a pretty big fan on, on how he played. So definitely hoping he gets more ice time in, the, in the, the, the year coming up and see how he can perform. And then finally, to round out the defensive core, Nikita Zadorov, 6'6", 236. I mean, he's just a monster. Uh, so, I mean, a pretty good team overall. And then, of course, in the Nets, 
Jacob Markstrom had a really, 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 really bad postseason against the Edmonton Oilers, but still a top-tier goalie, 88 overall in this. And then they got Dan Vladar as the backup goalie, Dark Vader, I think they call him. Uh, so yeah, that's the team for the Calgary Flames. I mean, pretty damn good if you ask me still, especially losing two superstar players into Chuck and Goudreau, but they kind of replaced them with two really good players and a good defenseman, so not too bad there. And the defensive, or in the AHL here, I'll just kind of go best lines. Um, not going to really be worried about this because we're not going to be worried about roster development or anything along those lines, but this is kind of what they have in the system. Nothing too crazy, just looking at the overall. So uh, Matt Cor Cor Coronado might potentially make it. I mean, 74 overall, top six at 18 years old. Probably going to see him in our franchise mode, hopefully. Uh, Pelletier, again, 20 over twenty years old, 74 overall, so could potentially grow go there. Zary, I know, is actually a decent prospect. Uh, so I'm going to try to bring him up the roster here. Uh, Kirkland, older, 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 older. And then defensively, any prospects? We got uh, Valamaki, who we could bring up if we need. Uh, I kind of think it would be a better idea to have him up instead of Nikita Zadorov, but we'll keep him down there for now. Let him play there one year, but nothing really else. And in the cage, you can go there, and it's uh, Adam Werner. So, I mean, we don't have to worry too much about the goaltending. We have our two goaltenders of the future and current. But basically, I'm going to simulate the entire year. I'll meet you at the end of the year. Actually, game number one, let's simulate to the regular season here and slow sim the first game of the year and see how the Flames do. Honestly, the team is pretty good. I think we can win a Stanley Cup within three years. I really think we can win the Cup. So who do we owe? Oh, Edmonton Oilers, a divisional rival battle of Alberta. Let's see who goes down in game number one of the regular season for the Calgary Flames. We are on the road, but let's see. First period, two to nothing, Evander Kane and uh, Kyler Yamamoto. Second period, Evander Kane, Tyson Berry, but Majapani scores the first goal of the year for us. Third period, Nazim the Dream gets a goal in his opening game, but let's simulate the rest of the year, and I'll catch you guys at the end of the year where I hope we're in the playoffs, but you never know. Kadri, two points, though. Let's go. Year number one, let's get it rolling. With year one coming to a close here, we do make the Stanley Cup playoffs in round one. We take down the Vancouver Canucks in seven games. In round two, we take down our rivals in six games. But in the third round, the conference finals, we fall to the Colorado Avalanche four to two. But let's see how the team did. 48 wins, 31 losses, three overtime losses. In the regular season, leading the way was Jonathan Huberto with 86 points, 62 helpers, 24 apples. Kadri right behind him, 82 points. Lindholm a little bit slower, 67 points. To Foley really held down that first line. So if we can get a first liner to play with Kadri and Huberto, I think that'll be massive. But I mean, Lindholm was actually on the second line, so 67 points on the second line, not too bad. But a minus player that second line had a rough go. Um, Let's see, where did Uyghur finish? There you go, 36 points, plus 13. Love to see that. Um, let's take a look at the entire NHL, see who led the way with year number one. Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid, and there he is. Johnny Gaudreau, former Calgary Flame, does really well in his first year for the Columbus Blue Jackets, putting up 112 points. But again, not a bad year from us, so I can take that. Looking at the awards of year number one, so... Do we win any trophies for Calgary? Not seeing anything. So no trophies for us for the Calgary Flames. But I'm going to go ahead and do the offseason. And maybe I'll, yeah, let's, uh, I'll come, come back to the video in the free agency period and see if we make any moves there. Entering free agency here. There's not too many big fish actually in free agency. So just kind of looking around, fill the thrill castle. I mean, that would be fun. Uh, we have... $8 million. Paul Stastny is probably not a bad move, but I just want to quickly look through to see if any of these are superstar X Factor. So there we go. Radulov, superstar X Factor, maybe could help out the second line or even third line. It wouldn't be a bad move. See if we can get Radulov on, on a nice deal. Go two years at $2 million. I don't want to offer him too much. Don't really need him, but kind of looking down, there's nothing really crazy in here. So I'll do a couple, I'll look around a little bit, a two-way forward, two-way forward for 
fourth line, probably not a bad idea also. See if we can grab him at $1.7 million. Jumbo Joe Thornton. But yeah, again, nothing uh, nothing too crazy. This is one of the weaker uh, free agencies I've ever really seen. 85 overall being the highest. Sonny Milano, restricted free agent though. Sam Gagne is there. Uh, not going to pay him $6 million. Phil the Thrill Kessel honestly would be pretty fun to bring in. But I think I'm going to hold off on it. Um, and then goaltenders here. See if there's anything there. We don't need a goalie, but you want to look. What do you think? Do you think we got to grab Phil? I think we got to grab Phil. I'm really tempted for Phil Kessel. Is that bad? Like, really tempted for Phil Kessel. Paul Stastny's probably a better option. Looking down, just a, someone to help out defensively. Uh, P.K. Subban, not going to bring in. Paul Stastny. You know what? Paul Stastny. I'm going to keep the team out of this. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm going to try grabbing Radulov, though. And then uh, Kokinen or Kokinen, Kukinen. Uh, see if there's any potential guys we can grab. Uh, this guy's actually pretty good. Who's this? I will offer you a deal. No picks required. Yep, I'm going to do that. And uh, I think those are the only moves I'm going to make. Playmaker for him. Probably won't ever crack the team, but might as well try to make a move. So I will see you guys in the beginning of year number two. Calgary, look at your new first line right winger, Mr. Alex Radulov. He's going to be playing on that first line. Honestly, I'm really banking on he's going to be a good goal scorer, hopefully, for this, this line. So I have him a little bit higher up in the depth charts. Plus, he gives a nice plus three, so 85 overall will be nice. Uh, probably not going to see the best production out of him, but you never know. Never know. Magipani, if I threw there, would, would have bad. Uh, Toffoli is only a plus one and didn't play really well in that first line last time. I think if we could get to fully up, I would like to get him up, uh, especially since he's a superstar X Factor. But we'll keep it like that for now. Uh, Huberto, Nazim the Dream, and Radulov, Majapani, uh, Elias Lindholm, and Dylan Dubé. I could do it like this. Do I want to do it that way to get the plus two on the second line? I'm kind of torn. You know what? It's Kadri's rebuild. We're keeping him on the first line. I mean, it doesn't matter. Then we're going Kevin Rooney just so it can be minus or morale zero instead of minus two. Backlund and Tyler Toffoli. And then fourth line, Blake Coleman, uh, Kuka, Kuka Cannon, and Pelletier. Defensively, Uyghur, Anderson, Tanev, Hannafin, Krillington, and Valimaki will be making his debut this year for the good guys. Let's see if we can kind of mess around with this at all. I'm going to keep it exactly like that. And then just power play. I want to make sure that it looks good to me. Um, I'm going to actually put... Kadri here and then I will go who can take a face off out of these none of them eh of course none of them can take a face off 65 65 60 you know what yeah they'll live 65 face off it's gonna be you ratchel off learn how to take face offs and we'll be good to go uh but let's get the year underway once again we will simulate game number one of year number two here and see how we do so last year made it to the second round Actually, we made it to the third round where we eventually fell in game six to the Colorado Avalanche. So year number two, what do we got in store for us? Game number one, this time we got the Arizona Coyotes. So let's simulate it. We are on home ice this time in game number one, which hopefully is a positive. First period, we get a goal from, there you go, Rooney. Second period, okay, okay, a big explosion. Three goals for us, Lindholm, Anderson, and Huberto. So four straight, four different goal scorers. Love to see that. And then third period, Dubé and Backlund. So six goals in game number one. Elias Lindholm, big game. Toffoli, big game on that third line. Rooney, big game on that third line. So love to see that. I'm going to simulate year number two, and I'll catch you guys at the end of the year. So, so, so close to winning the Stanley Cup. In year two, we fall in the Stanley Cup finals to the Tampa Bay Lightning, where in this universe, it is their fourth straight Stanley Cup I believe which is incredible but actually in round number one when I was simulating we were down three nothing to the Vegas Golden Knights but crawled back to make it uh four straight games to advance round two where we took out Anaheim and they took out Edmonton once again but fell in the finals let's look at the stats we actually did not do nearly as good this year as technically we went 41 and uh and 41 <laughs> Uh, and Nazim Kadri led the way with 75 points. So definitely down on goal scoring this year. Uyghur had a great year for us, though. 
Um, Huberto only 68 points minus two. Mangiapane played really well for us. But yeah, a down down year for goal scoring for us. So must have been the goaltending who who really should shine for us uh, and not even. So honestly, don't know how he played so good. But in the playoffs, I saw Nazim Kadri had a great postseason and Huberto and Lindholm. So they kind of, they, they're big game performers. We'll say that. But another year, another fail. So we're heading into... Uh, year number three here so let's see if we can make any changes to kind of put our team over the hump and win a stanley cup before the end of the simulation oh we made some moves we made some moves here first line jonathan huberto nazim the dream and then max patretti from free agency uh, hopefully can help out there second line we got magipani or magipani uh elias lindholm and rajla still on the squad third line denisenko Rasmussen and Dylan Dubé so two new players there and then fourth line Tyler Toffoli Pelletier and Kokanen so I made a couple moves there defensively Uyghur Anderson and this is where we really bolstered up the team we got Dumba on the squad so to help out that defensive core Noah Hannafin Krillington and Valimaki so our defensive core is looking pretty sweet if you ask me now and seeing if we can get this morale any higher. I'd like to get Dumb on that first line. I'd really think he'd play well there. But we'll keep him where he is now. But that is our team heading into the final year. So let's see if this team can get it done. I would like to have to fully up where Radulov is. But just for morale purposes, I'll keep it like this. But year three, let's get it underway. Nazim, lead us to greatness, my brother. Let's go. Oh, no. Oh no, year three was a complete disaster. As a Sens fan, it was great. I mean, one Stanley Cup finally. But the Calgary Flames miss the Stanley Cup playoffs. We finished with the exact same record we had last year, 41, 36, and 5. But this time, missing the playoffs, that's unfortunate. Tough way to end it. But player stats, Elias Lindholm leads the way with 77 points. Huberto, Rajlov, Uyghur, Pacioretty really didn't do much, but... Just the goal scoring was a problem, and that's kind of what it comes down to. Kadri had a rough third year for us, but, I mean, throughout the other two years, he, he was pretty damn good for us, so can't really complain. But what do you guys think will happen with the Calgary Flames? Are they going to make the Stanley Cup playoffs, or are they going to bust? Let me know what you think in the comments. I have them, you know, they could probably make the playoffs. I don't think they got that much worse than they were last year. Um, I don't think they're Stanley Cup contenders. I think Edmonton is still still probably the best in that division there. But you never know. There's always those Cinderella stories. So let me know what you guys think about the Calgary Flames, how the simulation went, and who we should simulate next. And as always, have a fantastic day. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.